All right, so in today's lesson, we're getting a little bit more advanced here. We have a file called account.log, and we have some data. How do you spell account? How do you spell account? Come on. All right, so here's the file. Very simple. Number equals number, or number equals value, rather. Tag equals value. This is actually fixed log, so it's, it's in a format of tag equals value. Now, tag one is, uh, is the account number. So one equals this number. Let me just highlight. That's probably better for you to see. There you go. So there's one. There's one. Uh, one equals that. One equals that. One equals that. So what do we want to do here in this scenario? Let's assume that we want to filter these out and change them to random numbers for security reasons. So we want we want to hide these account values from um, from someone, from the public, whatever it is, and we, but we still want to have this account equals kind of set up in there. So essentially, we want it to look as if the account numbers are still in there, but the actual values are going to be invalid because it'll be random numbers. So rather than one equals an actual account number, we're going to have one equals some random number. Okay? This has actually already been filtered. I actually created this file and I put in. So these are actually not uh, real account numbers. But regardless, I want to show you in this scenario how you can go into a file and change a specific value to a random number. Now, the way I'm going to do this, a lot of the techniques I'm going to use are really good things to know how to do. So this is not necessarily, don't look at this as necessarily, you know, this is how to do this specific task. This is a learning exercise. That if you pay close attention to a lot of the techniques that I'm going to use, you'll be able to recall and reuse those techniques for a lot of different things, for your scripting, for doing things on the command line, you name it. All right, so before I bore you and you fall asleep, let's continue. So here's our file, and again, we want to modify the just the value, so the number after equals, so just this. So in this case, we want to, we want to change this. 6 is actually the next pair. That's the next tag equals value pair. So we just want to change this number. So we're targeting starting at after the equal sign to just before the, the next value. In this case, it seems to be always 6. All right, we want to change this, every occurrence of this, in this range, to a random number. Okay, so after I've said it a million times, I think you finally got it. All right, I think you're up to speed. So first of all, Let's look at, at ways that we can, we can change that value just in general. All right, so let's start with the basics. So we're going to go ahead and use SED, our Streamline Editor. Very cool tool to use, fast, and great for something simple like this. So we're just doing a replace. So we're going to go and open quotes, close quotes, and then we have our uh, delineation or delimiters, whatever you want to call it, because we want to be able to specify one thing changing to the next, okay? But we're doing a substitute, so we want to put S for substitute, and then we want to put our first value. So let's just, just to get things started, so I'll put one equals, and I'm going to replace one equals with uh, replaced, replaced, okay? So I'm just going to basically change that to replace. Now I want to do this globally, so I want every, every, every single instance of one equals to be replaced with replaced, okay? That's what we want to do here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, because it's just for the purpose of demonstration, so I'm going to actually go ahead and cat the file, the account.log file, pipe it to said, and we're going to do that, that replacement and see what happens. All right? So without further ado, boom. Replaced, replaced, replaced. So it worked. So now you get a sense of just the basics of how to do a find and replace using said, which is kind of the first step in, in being able to do what it is that we are trying to do. Okay? So what we're going to do next is let's change up the formatting of how we did this. So rather than, than catting the file and typing it to said, let's do something a little bit different. We're going to run said. And we are going to actually, actually, no, not yet, or actually, whatever, put it there now. But we want to actually target the actual file. So we want to do this on account.log. 
and then we want to send the output of this into a new file called account modified.log. Alrighty, so what are we doing here? We are doing the same find and replace. Find this, replace with replaced. Very creative. Do this globally. What are we doing globally? Substitution. Okay? And we are doing this on this particular file, which is account.log. And we're taking the results of this action, of all this, taking the results of that on that file, and we're outputting it into this new file called accountmodify.log. Okay? Now, I'm going to do, you can actually basically combine commands. I want to see the results of this. So what I'm going to do is we can actually add semicolon. Okay, and then we can do a cat and type in account modified.log. Boom! There you have it. So we did it. So same results, just the way I formatted the command line. A little bit different, a little more efficient. And then we added in this final piece here, which is just for the purposes of visibility. I want to see. I want to see what you did, man. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see what you did. Made the changes. Put it in this file. But I won't have to go and type in after that. Go and type in cat, con, da, 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 da. No, man. Do it all in one go. Just add a semicolon and add the command that you know you're going to type anyway. Because after you made the changes, you want to see what they look like. So I just put it right in there. All right? We are on our way. Okay, now we need to step it up a notch. So First of all, we don't want to remove the, the one equals. We want that to still remain there. So that's very easy. Just simply put it in there. Right? So now we're going to replace one equals with one equals and this. Okay? But we're only targeting one equals. We need to target this number, but the number is constantly changing. How on earth are you going to replace this number? when it's different. I could, I could replace just one of them. So for example, let's take this account number and in our next example we are going to replace account equals <clears throat> that particular account and run it. Now what we see happens here is that it actually, let's see if we can find what happened here. Do you know? Can you see the mistake? Attention to detail. And let's actually clean this up a little bit better. So we'll add another command to this whole deal. So we will start our command with a clear so we can clear the screen so we don't have old attempts still visible. And there you have it. Now, the problem here is that we don't have the correct account number in our command line. Okay? The correct account number should be, and actually, what we should do here is rather than doing it that way, let's do a, that, that's fine. But the account number that we're replacing is 1 equals 3, blah, blah, blah. But the actual account number is listed as, where are you? Here you are. It's C3. So we're missing the C. So hopefully you guys caught on to that. All right. So attention to detail. Got to be very, very precise, very, very specific. That's why we're not going to put this in here. We're going to put this in here. And now we run it again and we can see it worked. So that works fine. But how are we going to replace all these other account numbers? Now, if we're really backwards and really amateur hour, we could go and maybe do some kind of loop or something and, you know, put all the uh, extract all the account values, put them into a separate file, process line by line in a loop, you know, taking uh, one account number and replacing it. Da, da, da. So doing it one by one, line by line, I mean, that's, that's absolutely retarded. We don't want to do that. So what we want to do is we want to establish a wild card. What is the pattern here that we need to replace? And let's also add to our little convenient way that we're displaying this by I'm going to add a just for the purpose of debug 
I'm going to add a cat account dot log so we can see the, the, the log before and then we see after see the modified right so now we can see this was replaced with this all right now let's be even more slick here I'm gonna separate the two by adding an echo and we can just put uh, underscore whatever and then cat look at that look how neat that is so you can see a clear separation before after all right so now what do we do we need to establish our pattern so how do we establish our pattern we can't target a specific number we want to do a wild card so let's get rid of all this so one equals is fine and let's go ahead and type in a range of characters first of all before we do this you have, you have to establish what the possibility what all the possibilities are every single account number only consists of capital letters and numbers no special characters nothing else and you want to be very very particular about that very very specific about that if it's a big file maybe do a grep grep for one equals and something that includes um, something that does not include a letter or a number so that you there, therefore you can find out if there's any other characters in there this is by a process of elimination so it looks like it's just letters and numbers do a grep for any account number that includes a character that's not a number or a character or a letter. <laughs> oh man. Ah, I think it's about lunchtime here. All right, so let's do our range of letters. So we can say A through Z. We want to also include numbers, so we do 0 through 9. Okay? So let's see what happens with that. Voila! So now we see this 1 equals replaced is occurring in every single instance. How However, we still have the old account number still being listed here. Okay? Now, one of the things that I'm going to want to do here, which we did not do, is I want to be very, very specific about what I'm modifying. So I'm going to include the delimiter before the one because there could be a uh, case where, and actually, let's let's produce that particular case. So VIM, because we, we could actually probably create the problem, I believe. Let's see. So we're going to go into the log. And how much time do we have? Okay, time is running out on us here. All right, so I'm going to add another line in this log. Let's copy this. There's actually a better way to do this in a VIM. But I'm keeping things simple here. All right, so let's go to the end, go here, and then, because there's a way that you can grab stuff using Y. But I'm keeping things simple here. All right, so what if in this particular line, let's include a 11 equals don't change me all right so there is a potential problem let's run our deal again and see what happened so you see it actually replaced this even though this is not a one equals this is 11 equals but it matches our pattern because we said one equals we didn't specify what a, what uh, that we cared what's before the one now in this case there should be only a delimiter before the one. There should not be any letters or characters. So we're going to go and say that basically what we want to do is we want to say that there is only a delimiter before this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do control A and that is how you actually write that delimiter character that's used in this particular log which is called SOH. Okay? And if we run it now we can see that it is still hitting that. So let's let's see what we did wrong here. Let's go ahead and double check this. So we're going to go ahead and go back into the command here. Let's see what's wrong with the command. All right, do you see what's wrong with the command? All right, so we're out of time, but there are a couple of things that are wrong here and we still have some more steps to undertake. So we'll, we'll tackle this all in part two. So I will see you in about a week or two when we complete this exercise.
go ahead and thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Comment below.